healing, right? Mm -hmm. He said, why call ye me? Now, you, he, this is Jesus talking. You calling on Jesus. Lord, Lord, help me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He said, why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and don't do the things that I say? This is the problem. This is why it's a sad state of affairs. Many people think they know him, mm -hmm. but they don't. You need to ask yourself this question. Do you know him according to the Bible? That's the question. Jesus, do you really know him? Now, let's go to uh, Jeremiah 14, because this is nothing new. People think because they call on the name of the Lord, that automatically gives them an end. Don't work like that. Jeremiah 14 and verse 14. Okay, go ahead. Then the Lord said unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, uh -huh. neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination, uh -huh. and a thing of naught, and the, the deceit of their hearts. See what the Lord told Jeremiah? This is a problem. Many people have been listening to false prophets tell them, just call on the Lord. Oh, you ain't got to do nothing. But they're always trying to collect some money. They don't mm -hmm. forget that part. Right. But no, you cannot listen to the wrong one tell. It don't matter if he calling on the Lord, telling you to call on the Lord, because false prophets have been doing that. That's what the Lord told Jeremiah. Jeremiah was complaining about him. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, look, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. That mean they got the name, don't they? Right. People think that if you, some people believe in the name of Jesus. Some people even get baptized in the name of Jesus. But if you don't do God's will in the name of Jesus, the name not going to help you, brother and sister. Right. In vain. Didn't help them. It's in vain. Mm -hmm. Didn't help them. He said they prophesy lies in my name. Lord said, I haven't even sent these preachers. And they prophesying how they own imagination. It's evident now because they not reading no Bible. They reading a verse here. There. That's, that's being slick. But they're going to give you their own imagination and their own thought. Let's go to Matthew 24. Let's go back to the New Testament. Show you this thing is all the way down to our days. Yeah, it was in the old days with Jeremiah. But it's down to our days, brothers and sisters. Matthew 24 and verse 3, the disciples asked Jesus about our days, the last days that we're living in. It. The world is about to end real soon. You just don't know. That's why you're running out of time. Matthew 24 and verse 3. Go ahead. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? See, they knew what the deal was. So they asked Jesus, what's going to be the sign of your coming? Give us some signs before you come. And the end of the world. That's what we waiting on. Lord going to change this whole, he going to flip the script, so to speak. He going to change this whole world around, and it's going to be a heavenly kingdom on this earth. That's, the world going to end as we know it. It's going to continue to go on. It's going to go on under righteousness after that, though. So they asked him, give us the sign of your coming and the end of the world. Let's see the sign Jesus gave him first. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. Oh, the first thing he warned you is about deception. Don't let nobody make you think calling is all you got to do. That's one of, one of the big time false doctrines in the world. He said, take heed that no man deceive you. Why? Go ahead. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Oh, not a few. Many going to come in my name. See, just coming in his name don't mean nothing, brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. if you don't do his will. He said, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? Many shall come in my name saying I am Christ, but they still deceiving me. He going to say it again. Verse 11. Go ahead. Skip down to verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Oh, many. See, not a few, right? Mm -hmm. That's why many people going to seek to enter in and not be able. And only a few people going to be saved because many people are listening to false shepherds out here. You got to beware of that. Many people listen to false shepherds. So he said here, many, at verse 11, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. So ask yourself, have you been deceived by one of the many false prophets? But now let's go further. Go to, keep your finger in Matthew because we want to save you time because we want you to read these scriptures with us. We're going to come back here, but go to 2 Corinthians 11. Then we'll come back to Matthew 7. 2 Corinthians 11, first of all, though. 2 Corinthians 11, and we are going to pick it up at verse 3. P 
Paul is going to tell you about these same many false prophets. He's going to give them another title. Well, false is false. Whether they call themselves a prophet so-and-so, pastor so-and-so, reverend so-and-so. Some of them use apostle so-and-so. Don't matter. Look at the teaching. Are they teaching you to do God's will? Time out for just calling, brothers and sisters, and praising. Time out for that. 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 3. 2 Corinthians 11 and pick it up at verse 3. Go ahead, brother. But I fear, least by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. See, don't get sidetracked. Because the word of God is plain. What we read is plain out the Bible, but most of us haven't heard it because we've been taught something else. But the word of God is plain. And it's not like salvation is just presto, you get saved.